and welcome. We're so glad you're here. The Mind Walks program is underwritten by the Thomas E. and Mary Catherine Eltsroth Fund and supported by the Central Coast State Parks Association. If you'd like to help support the virtual Mind Walk program or other state parks educational programs, please check out the link you see right there on the screen, centralcoastparks.org slash friend. And um, that's where you can make a donation to the Central Coast State Parks Association. If you donate $35 or more to become a friend of CSPA, you'll receive perks such as store discounts and newsletter subscriptions. There are several different programs that you can choose to support and make an impact in. Thank you so much to those of you who are already friends of the Central Coast State Parks Association. So today we have with us Lieutenant Matt Shanley. The title of his presentation is Keeping an Eye on Wildlife. And Lieutenant Matt Matthew Shanley recently promoted to Lieutenant Specialist as the statewide coordinator for the CalTIP program, a secret witness program to report unlawful activity regarding, regarding California wildlife. Lieutenant Shanley grew up in the San Francisco Sunset District. He received a Bachelor of Science in Wildlife, Fish, and Conservation Biology at UC Davis. Locally, Lieutenant Shanley has spent time training at Camp San Luis, Camp Roberts, and Fort Hunter Liggett as either an enlisted Marine or as a wildlife officer. One of Lieutenant Shanley's favorite places in California is right up the coast in Big Creek. Most notably, he and his two children, ages six and nine, ran the San Luis Obispo Spartan Race in Santa Margarita this year. So um, as kind of our typical format today, we'll be taking questions at the end of the program. Please feel free to utilize the chat feature and Q and A, and um, and yeah, we'll we'll get to those at the end. And now I'd like to hand it over to Lieutenant Shanley. Hello, everyone. So um, I'm Lieutenant Shanley. Before I uh, further introduce myself, I just wanted to pop up a fun exercise um, with regard to what you have on the screen. You have two snakes, and uh, take a mental note of them. Uh, think of what their differences may be. And uh, we'll readdress that here in the near future. So I'm Lieutenant Shanley. I, I started uh, at the academy in 1999. So I've been, I was a field officer for over 20 years. And uh, I just recently got promoted to the Lieutenant Specialist position for the CalTIP program. And so I have the opportunity to put on these PowerPoints for you. Um, and one of the most important things I can do throughout this PowerPoint session is to let you know, um, and, or I want you to be comfortable with um, the CalTIP program, what it is and how you can access it. So if you download during, you'll have the opportunity during this PowerPoint to download the CalTIP phone number on your phone and have it at your fingertips, um, uh, you know, for the, for the, whenever you need it. So, and then we'll, we'll discuss when you'll need it. Um, so, like this is a good example. The slide in front of you is a good example of if you're driving down the road on route or highway one and you see something that you just don't feel comfortable with um, and you don't know exactly what it is, but you think it may have to do with the resources of California, it's a good time to uh, uh, give the CalTIP number a call and, and describe what you see. So if you call a CalTIP number, you'll talk to a dispatcher and I'll get into that um, here shortly. So um, what you can do to help is understand what your resources are. And in San Luis Obispo, it's such an amazing area and you have so many resources at your tips. So the central, it's part of the Central Enforcement District and uh, Lieutenant uh, Matthew Gill is the Lieutenant Supervisor for the area. And uh, I believe in San Luis Obispo County, there may be 15 to 20 um, law enforcement officers with different tasks. So whether it has to do with the um, cannabis enforcement program or the marijuana enforcement team or OSPR, you have several of these resources um, available to you, which is um, unusual throughout the state of California and, and really awesome for the uh, county of San Luis Obispo. And then at the in the city of San Luis Obispo, you have the California Department of Fish and Wildlife Office, which um, includes Marine Fisheries Division, Inland Fisheries Division, Wildlife Management, and Habitat Conservation. And if anyone's looking um, to volunteer for our department, we have the Natural Resource Volunteer Program as well, 
And there's a chapter in San Luis Obispo, which is awesome. So uh, Caltip uh, is, it started in 1981 and uh, it went, it's available to all people who wish to call the hotline 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, if you ever wonder what Caltip has it started, it's California turns in uh, poachers and polluters. And so that's where the term Caltip um, derived from. And so this is, if you can see the phone number for Caltip is 1-888-334-2258. And it started with DFG being the 334 portion of it, but we changed to Department of Fish and Wildlife. So now we just write the numbers 334. And then the 2258 is the C-A-L-T, first part of the Caltip uh, number. And here, if you so choose, I highly suggest, um, I think every Californian and every person who visits California, it's a great idea to have the Caltip phone number at your fingertips. And what you can also do is download the smartphone app. And this will be the icon on your phone if you do that. And so now you have one you can call if you see something. Um, and we'll discuss um, here what the possibilities of things you can see are in order to uh, give the Caltip phone number a call here shortly. So. Um, we have the phone number, 888-334-2258. It'd be awesome if you all put that into your phone. Um, and then we also have the TIP411 um, texting uh, ability. So if you were to text TIP411-847-411 into your phone, and then the first word you would text is CalTIP, leave a space, and then uh, you can report what you see or observe uh, in order to um, access the Caltip program. And uh, that's separate th from the phone app. So the phone app would be an app on your phone that you click and uh, it asks you for, uh, for the information. It gives you boxes to fill out. And then the texting uh, capability is, uh, you know, type in Caltip and then uh, your description of what's going on. Um, you can also go to our website and report it online. If you go to the Caltip portion of our website and report, hit the report a violation um, section, then it'll give you the same uh, possibility. So it's available 24-7, as I already mentioned, and you, do, you can remain anonymous. You do not have to report your name or any identifying information. And... Um, the bonus is that callers may be eligible to collect a reward. And I'll talk more about that toward the end of this presentation. So when you call the CalTIP number, you know, you'll, you'll talk to a dispatcher. Um, they'll ask you whatever information is appropriate for the incident you're calling in, whether it's pollution in a stream bed or um, cutting down branches that have nesting birds in them, or if you're going along the coast and you see someone disturbing elephant seals, then the dispatcher will get that appropriate information and then distribute it by an email or a phone call to the nearest game warden and then, or wildlife officer, and then um, they'll respond to that call. So here's the texting, um, Here's a description of the texting. So 847411 would be the number you text to. And uh, when you text to that, the first um, letters you put in would be CalTIP and then leave a space and then type what your observations are that you're concerned about. And that'll go to the TIP411 uh, database and uh, it'll get dispatched or distributed to the appropriate uh, wildlife officer from there. And then here's the application, or here's the, when you hit the phone app, um, this is what pops up and you fill in your information, the what or the subject involved, where location is very important, and then whatever details you think are necessary. And then you hit submit. And then here's what the online uh, uh, reporting page looks like. And you can see it's the same information. And our, uh, website, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife website now 
is really user friendly. So regardless of, um, you know, if you're admiring wildlife, wherever you're at, it's always good to check out our website to see um, maybe what tours are available or what wildlife can be found in that area, uh, what seasons are open if you're accessing the resources and you're conservationist hunting or fishing. Um, and then um, if you do see, if you are using one of these applications, whether it's the CalTIP phone number or the TIP 411 um, texting um, number or the uh, phone application, the who, what, where, and when are, are the important aspects. And that's why I kind of introduced the PowerPoint with, um, with the two uh, snakes. Uh, one was venomous, the one on the left was venomous, and the one on the right, uh, not venomous. One was a the rattlesnake and one was a gopher snake. And so um, I'm curious, and it's, this is kind of um, a rhetorical question, um, what did you come up with? What uh, were the three, possibly three characteristics between those two animals uh, that would distinguish them apart? And um, if we will hit that slide again, and the rattlesnake on the left has the triangular shaped head, the black and white stripe toward the end of his tail, and of course the rattle. And so if you just try to describe it, when people try to describe it otherwise, um, maybe the pattern and the color, you know, you can, you can easily um, not distinguish between the two of them. So it's important when you're calling in a cal tip to kind of look at it from a law enforcement perspective um, and point out what is readily distinguishable um, with what you're describing. So uh, with regard to a vehicle, for example, if, it's, uh, if there's a spare tire on the front passenger side, then um, someone who is looking for that vehicle can look for that uh, specifically. If there's a primed rear quarter panel, then they can look for that. So it's kind of a, a different way than most people are used to um, being able to describe certain things. Now, um, CalTIP results. So when the CalTIPs have been called in, um, and I apologize, I have to thank, uh, before I go on, I have to thank uh, Monica Rutherford and Mallory Clausen uh, for all their help putting on this uh, PowerPoint. I'm sorry I didn't do that at the beginning, but uh, thank you very much, Mallory and uh, Monica. And now I'll go on. So now we're, the CalTIP results um, have been really remarkable um, since the program started um, 40 years ago. And uh, what the CalTIP program does is, is allow law enforcement to have eyes where in areas where they just can't cover all the time. So there's, um, these are sturgeon and I'll go back quickly to, uh, here's abalone, sturgeon, and there was another slide in there. Okay, well, I'll go on. But it's, it's remarkable um, throughout the state of California because it is so vast, um, the amount of area we have to cover. So this slide says there's over three, 300 field officers. I believe it's closer to 400 field officers now, but there's 38 to 40 million Californians in the state now. And California is approximately 163 square miles. So with 4,800 lakes and reservoirs, 30,000 miles of river, 1,100 miles of coastline, and uh, wildlife officers patrol um, as far out as 200 miles from the shoreline. So I always, uh, whenever I'm reminded of these numbers, I'm always um, amazed at how much territory wildlife officers throughout the state are responsible for. And so that even makes the CalTIP program more important because um, working with the public and all those people who have additional sets of eyes uh, really makes California a lot smaller when we have people we can depend on who are observing our resources being um, taken advantage of or abuse, the, the rights to access them abused and uh, animals poached, for example. So more information with regard to California 
is that there's a hundred, there's one million acres of California Department of Fish and Wildlife managed property. There's seven major ports, 300 million pounds of commercial fish landed, and 66 businesses that catch, process, distribute, and sell fish. And I believe the 300 million uh, pounds of commercial fish landings, I'm not sure the time frame of which that is. Uh, I wouldn't doubt if it was a year, but I, um, I'm not sure. And then we have 1 million registered vessels. So that's a lot of boats accessing uh, our waterways, lakes, rivers, reservoirs, and coastline. So this is an interesting slide um, because when one of these, these slides are from when the Caltip program began, and one is more recently, I believe, um, two years ago, and they're hard to differentiate and hard to figure out which is which because um, not much has changed with regard to people taking over limits um, in the past 40 years. So it's really important for uh, there to be a wildlife officer presence and more important for the public and um, Californians, especially visitors as well, to report things and feel comfortable with calling the Caltip number when they see something that they don't think is right or justified or ethical. And so a few things that are important to look for may be out of most people's wheelhouses because they're not, they don't access the resources on a regular basis. So they uh, legal hunting and fishing limits, um, we, you can check those out on our websites. Um, the seasons for taking wildlife um, in San Luis Obispo, um, there's a deer season, there's a bear season, there's fishing seasons, and um, there's protected species, and the, there's certain methods of take that are legal and un unlawful. So here is, now, now there's a few examples of what cow tips have resulted in after investigations by wildlife officers. So three poachers out of Madera County took 404 uh, crappie and 75 would have been their maximum allowable take in that situation. Here, uh, one gentleman took over 300 waterfowl, including the swan in the front. And within a year later, um, he, he was caught taking 22 ducks over, over the limit. So pretty amazing what people will do and how it goes beyond sustainment. Um, here's a lobster case, Redondo Beach, 132 lobsters and many were undersized um, that resulted from a cow tip. And here is a white shark that washed up on shore and the white shark was shot and uh, this resulted, so a cat, someone called it in using the cow tip line. And uh, this is an excellent example of something you may see uh, walking along the beach between Moro Rock and Cayucas. I think it's a two mile stretch of beach, you know, where there are, are sharks and, you know, for a shark to wash up on shore is not, you know, out of the poss possibilities what you may find. And then, you know, it's an unusual event and feel free to call the Caltip number, report uh, the fact that a white shark has washed up on shore and you never know uh, what can happen when a wildlife officer shows up and decides to take a closer look. So here's an amazing uh, case where um, in 2019 in Lassen County, someone was convicted of killing 159 raptors. I think most of these are raptors, if not all of them, um, but what, could have been the possibility of a cow tip. So, so this was called in as a cow tip, but someone would not witness the taking of 159 birds. Perhaps it was just one. And how many people would drive by someone shooting, um, not observing what the person shot at and thinking, oh, they must be hunting. And then even if someone recognized the fact they were hunting a non-game bird, um, how could they possibly perceive they were someone who would kill up to 159. So it's important if something doesn't feel right or someone um, is accessing our resources and you have a question, um, you can give that Caltip number a call and let them know what you see. 
and then a wildlife officer can go out there and inspect the birds um, that possibly he would not ordinarily do because it wouldn't be part of his patrol or he hasn't set that area as a priority for his patrol on that day. So now I'll introduce you to um, Lieutenant Matthew Gill, who is Lieutenant Supervisor for your area. And one of the most important things I think this PowerPoint can do is introduce you to your local wildlife officers. Thank you, Matthew, for being here. Oh, thanks for having me on. Um, so one thing I'd say is the CalTIP program for San Luis Obispo County specifically is very vital. We make a lot of our best cases that we have are off the CalTIP program and people turning in poachers. So um, I'd like to say anybody that's on this, um, please take advantage of it. You can do it anonymously. You can do it uh, you know, with a reward possibly in the end, but they've helped us make some really great cases. So I supervise San Luis Obispo in South Monterey County. Um, on the PowerPoint, you can see um, this is a clam case that I made last year. And I would say right now, um, most of our cases that we're making are clam cases. Uh, we've had a resurgence of pismo clams uh, since 1994. Until this year, we had not had legal size pismo clams. And over the last, uh, since 2016, they started making a resurgence. Um, and this was a case that came in Caltip. I was sitting at the office, uh, got a call from our dispatch center, like as it was happening that there's people taking clams. Um, the RP or the reporting party in this case was a very good one. They sat there and waited the entire time. They never went and made contact with people and never went and talked to them, which we don't, um, don't actively tell anybody to do anything like that. They sat there and observed and they were a good witness. And so they sat there and they were able to watch them for about 20 minutes until I could get there. Uh, when I got there, they were able to tell me, hey, this is the, your suspect um, and this is the blue tent that they were at and everything like that. So it's kind of interesting come down to Pismo Beach, the city beach there. There's a group out there underneath a blue tent. And I was like, okay, that's where I need to go. And they're like, there's also this blue bag that they keep throwing the uh, um, clams into. And so actually go back one more slide if you can. And so that blue bag in the um, truck right there was full of clams. And there was an older lady. She was probably about in her seventies, I wanna say, maybe later than that. She was trying to take them out and walk away the second she saw me. Saw me, took them trying to get them back to the car and walk away. So I went up, contacted the group. They ended up uh, trying to deny they had any clams. Due to the great witness that we had from the CalTIP program, they were like, no, this is where they're at. They're in this bag. This is where they're you know, hidden at. So sure enough, I'm like, hey, let me see the bag. I was able to grab the bag and it's full of clams. Then I went through more stuff they had there. I'm like, is there anything else? Because the witness, like, I think they might've also put them in a backpack and I'm not sure. And so I asked about the backpack. No, no, nothing else. So I asked if I could search it and they were like, they gave me permission and looked at it and you see the white bag up there on the left. That was also full of clams. So this is just one case. Um, our officers have made some numerous big cases. Um, this year alone, um, through June, we only had, we've had 7,000 undersized Pismo clam seas. And so far in July, that's gonna be added on by a couple thousand. We've already had some significant cases. Last weekend, there was one of 745 clams that were taken. Um, and we're just starting to see some very close or legal sized clams showing up. Um, on the screen right now, you can see is another uh, umbrella bag and a bucket. Kind of looks inconspicuous and everything like that. Another cow tip call of um, clams being taken. So that umbrella bag is actually full of undersized Pismo clams. The officers went down there. They were able to run down there um, thanks to a great witness again saying, hey, they're in this blue umbrella type bag and there's a blue bucket associated with it. We we're able to walk right in on them. And they're like, no, 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 they, this is again, they tried taking that umbrella bag back to the vehicle and hiding it. Um, and that was another one I want to say several hundred clams that were undersized. You can see them there on the back there. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, yes, yeah, so that was a couple hundred clams right there. Um, last year we had 17,646 undersized clams taken across 215 sites in San Luis Obispo County, um, which is a lot of clams. Uh, in 2020, we had over 25,000. So. A lot of these cases that are being made are courtesy of the CalTIP program and the witnesses and the civilians out there that are trying to take a proactive approach and making sure that their resources are being protected and they're not being exploited. This kind of gives you an idea here on the slide is, these are the top three producing counties in the state last year. LA County's got a population of 10 million. There was 31,000 contacts made, the contact meaning that wildlife officer contacted someone that was actively fishing or hunting. And those officers issued 619 tickets in Los Angeles. San Diego County was second. And then you have San Luis Obispo County, a population of only 300,000, 
22,000 contacts were made, but third in the state for citations. A lot of those, you know, half of them were Bismarck related. But San Luis Obispo County, like uh, Lieutenant Shanley was talking about earlier, is very diverse. It has a lot of public land, a lot of public opportunity to come out. You have the beach. So it seems like we get um, a unique situation where you have a lot of people from uh, down south in the LA area, the Bay Area, and the Central Valley that kind of migrate to San Luis Obispo County to come uh, vacation. And doing such, we end up having a lot of people who may or may not know the regulations, but we have a lot of contacts, a lot of people from outside the area that are um, sometimes taking a lot of the resources away. And we want to make sure a lot of the, the locals that do a very good job of um, making sure that they contact us and they contact the CalTIP program. It's probably one of the most, I would say it's used in this county quite a bit. I don't know how well it's used in other counties that we seem to, today we already had CalTIPs for illegal fishing, commercial fishing out in the ocean. We'll probably have some later for Pismo clams. We have officers down there now. So um, this CalTIP program has been very vital for us in both South Monterey County and San Francisco County for the areas I oversee. Um, you're gonna to talk to a couple other officers here in a little bit and they're gonna give you their uh, cases that they've made and how well they, they work. But the CalTIP program, I, just, I can't emphasize, emphasize enough, is just it's a wonderful program that we have. It's working really well in San Luis Obispo County. And San Luis Obispo County's, you know, the only reason it works well is because you, the people, are out there actively trying to protect your wildlife. If you see something weird, say something. There's nothing wrong with just saying, hey, this looks kind of funky. Maybe you guys can look at it. Or, you know, at least brings it to our attention, to our officer's attention. Like, hey, there's some type, some type of fishing activity or hunting activity engaged here. We can take it as beat information and be like, okay, yeah, we need to start paying closer attention to this. So um, this kind of shows you though, San Francisco County up there with a lot of citations, a lot of people here um, coming to vacation, you know, people poaching stuff. So, you know, a lot of those are made from Caltip, which we really appreciate. So I'm not sure who's next. So, so we also have some questions maybe popping up. Thank and you, Lieutenant Gill. That yeah. was awesome. And Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. All right, next we have Officer Jason Chance, and uh, thanks for being here, Jason. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jason Chance. I'm uh, the Northern San Luis Obispo County uh, Warden, and so I do oversee the, the northern part of San Luis Obispo County. Uh, I do agree with the CalTIP program uh, primarily um, it's very helpful because we can't be everywhere all at once, so we need eyes and ears out there to report crimes, potential pollution events, etc. Um, as uh, indicated by Lieutenant Shanley, you know, our wildlife, fisheries, habitat, etc. are highly regulated, and the slide you're looking at right now is, is a couple deer heads, and deer are no exception. And then one of the ways we manage or regulate deer is uh, through uh, license tags, which are in addition to a hunting license. And so tags are uh, issued, lottery, et cetera, and there's a, 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 a quota or a quantity that is allotted for a particular area. Um, so in our area is the A zone. And in this particular case, which came in as a Cal tip uh, directly to me, which we can receive Cal tips either uh, uh, the 411 tip, or we can receive them direct from dispatch, email, or even our bosses like uh, Lieutenant Gill can forward the Cal tips to us as well. So different avenues of getting them to the field officers out there to take uh, care of business. And uh, this particular slide was more of like a cold case. Uh, had a hunter that was concerned that a neighbor uh, had um, one of these deers with no um, uh, tag attached to the antler. Uh, this picture right here shows a couple tags near the mouth of the of the deer, but uh, what the subject that reported it saw was just the head of the deer with no tag. So being an ethical hunter, called in anonymously and made the report and gave all the information I needed, the, the who, what, where, when, why, how, et cetera. So that onset an investigation where uh, ultimately through um, an automated license database check, a site, couple site visits at the residence, along with uh, some Facebook investigation, I determined that uh, the subject uh, poached a couple deer. One in particular, he poached the day before he bought the license tag to, uh, uh, for the deer 
and falsified the tag indicated that he took it the following day, um, not the day before. Uh, so um, that was a, a great case, got a good disposition out of it. That's one of the examples of a really good um, information obtained from a uh, concerned citizen through the Caltech program. You got another one for me? Uh, this uh, this is a really neat one. Um, it wasn't necessarily cow tip, but uh, the warden is actually counting the limpets. Those are limpets, kind of like mini abalone, which the bag limit on them is 35 with the fishing license. Uh, this particular case uh, um, was worked uh, undercover in Southern Monterey County and warden uh, Terry Hickey, who's counting these limpets, actually intercepted the vehicle as it was attempting to leave uh, through San Luis Obispo County. And what's interesting is the background, you seek a scale, and that's because the folks that actually poached these, and I think they had about 1,800 of them, so nearly 2,000, were actually intending on taking these and selling them in the valley using a scale, so meant by weight. All right, and so this is a, a, a huge Pismo flam uh, case that uh, Warden Classville and I made, um, I want to say it was uh, late last year. And uh, I want to, I believe it was like 1600 undersized Pismo clams. Uh, again, like uh, Lieutenant Gill said, the Pismo clam, uh, it's almost like an epidemic here, is just really out of hand where we really need the help from folks out there to call it in uh, if they see violations like this. Because as you can see, this amount of clams taking out of the population would really hurt um, uh, the populations of the clams in general. And again, our, our goal really is to uh, have these uh, resources readily available for the public and for future generations as well. Thank you. Officer Chance, that was awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lieutenant Gill, you guys rock. What is fantastic about the Caltech program is a lot of the relationships I've developed over the years have been through the Caltech program. So some um, person who I haven't met before calls the Caltech number and then um, request, uh, request that um, they ask me, is it okay if they have my um, cell phone number? And then uh, I give them my um, cell phone number and in the future sometimes they text me directly uh, and so it's awesome to uh, um, develop those um, relationships with um, people who are out in the field on a regular basis. So these are these are other um, opportunities that calling in the Caltip number allows for wildlife officers to make contact with people who are possibly violating um, the law and this is just an example of a routine inspection but the Caltip basically gives us an introduction to people who may be doing something wrong in the field. And in, in the Morro Bay area and along the coast, of course, you have commercial fishing enforcement and you also have the marine protected areas. And the more you spend time along the coast, it, I think I find it super important for you to even access um, our website and take a look at what those marine protected areas are. Um, the, uh, there's a huge commercial fishing fleet out there. And as I addressed uh, before, that's just the beginning of the um, commercial trade where the, the catch is brought into shore and then you're dealing with um, inspections that involve um, landing the fish on shore. Um, and then you have the inspection and the, of, the, of the processors and the processing um, areas, and then the end point or the point of sale. And so what's really interesting is this morning I received a tip 411 on the farmer's market down in Little Italy in San Diego for a person who was selling thresher shark. And so uh, once that tip 411 came in, I sent it down to the local wardens in San Diego and they'll be able to go to the farmer's market down there and uh, visit those folks. Next, we have Terry Hickey. Thanks for joining us, uh, Officer Hickey. 
Uh, hi, everybody. This is Terry Hickey. I'm a game warden for San Luis Obispo and Santa Margarita, Santa Barbara County. I work for the division of OSPR, which is the um, oil spill prevention and response team. Uh, the picture right here is my uh, my canine, kind of canine Kira. I just retired her in January. So I had her for 11 years of service here in San Luis County. And she's a what we call a dual purpose dog where she found evidence and for other officers and other agencies and uh, she provided protection as well. Um, Okay, this is a, a bear case that I made a couple of years ago here in San Luis Obispo County, which uh, bear season, there is no bear season in San Luis Obispo County. So it's it's prohibited, prohibited to hunt bear. So this was a cow tip that came in through the, the Forest Service in Pozo. They didn't have very much information based on what they saw and heard, which was just two shots and they saw some blood on the road. It was a couple of Forest Service agents that were conducting surveys. So there wasn't much information to go on, but I know the area very well. I know I knew all the officers, agents out there. So I went ahead and responded to the Pozo station. And when I arrived, uh, one of the officers had, had taken a photo of the last vehicle that had left the, the area. And so I ran that plate and it came back to a subject out of Fresno, Clovis area. And uh, I didn't have any cell phone service. So I, I via radio got a hold of Officer Chance later and he uh, got on to our automated data system to see if he had bear tags, any hunting licenses. And it was confirmed that he did have a bear tag. and. We got his address. I got a hold of some folks in uh, in the Clovis area to to help out. And so the short short story on this one. So he ended up shooting a sow, uh, which was in the other photo, uh, the mama bear, and left this orphan cub behind. So I'll, I'll, I got the the shell there on the road. Kira helped me. Uh, locate that shell. So when I arrived, we followed the blood trail down this canyon and, and I found the gut pile and I found the, 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 the little cub in a tree. So the cub's still out there. Um, it was old enough to, to fend for itself. However, it was still, it was still at that age where it, it was still with mom at the time. So that turned out to be a really good case um, for that. So um, so my my primary duty is is OSPR, and so which is includes any um, amount of oil that would enter uh, the state, which would include um, it must be petroleum based, and the phone number for OSPR, uh, the spill desk is uh, is right on the screen. So it's nine one six eight four five eight nine one one. So. Uh, that's where you report any spills that you that you might see, and that gets distributed uh, through through the the chain. So, which again, that would include any waters of the state and uh, creeks that are that are dry. Um, so, this was a, a case uh, I made a year ago up in Big Sur area where a uh, a yacht. It was a 52-foot yacht, had uh, ran aground there at um, Cooper's Point, and over the night, it just demolished, uh, spilling 700 gallons of diesel fuel along the the marine, uh, the state marine reserve right there. And uh, it, it ran off course and just hit the beach in the middle of the night. So that that call came out, and it's still it's still pending investigation at, at this time. So that was a good. Um, and this is the notification process for OSPR. So so when you contact OES, that phone number that was there, it's going to it's going to automatically uh, send information to uh, to 
our spill desk. It's going to go to all other agencies, fire police, and it's going to give them um, the location, the spill that was released, the quantity, the responsible party. It's going to have all that information. So then that information will go to what we call the FRT team. So there's going to be a warden, there's an environmental scientist, and then there's an environmental specialist. And so that FRT team then goes out and investigates, uh, you know, what further action we need to take based on the spill, the quantity, the amount, the location. And then we go from there. Great. Thank you so much, Officer Hickey. Before I go on, I'm just, a, I think everyone should be amazed that these are three officers um, that just presented a very small tidbit of what um, they've been responsible for in the cases they've made in the recent past. And uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, folks calling in Caltip. But uh, again, there's three to 400 officers in the field um, throughout the state. And we depend on Caltip to a great extent in order for us to get in the field. And one of the benefits for calling in Caltip is, um, you know, most people would do it for, or not necessarily for a reward, but rewards are available. And over $200,000 have been um, rewarded by the CalTIP committee since its initiation. And just um, in our last CalTIP meeting for the first quarter of this year, sorry, for the second quarter of this year, we re rewarded, the CalTIP committee awarded uh, $7,500 um, to, to nine folks who called in CalTIPs. And so you can request um, a reward when you call in the CalTIP and give them your information. Um, or, you know, if it's, it becomes a significant reward or a case later, then uh, someone could uh, nominate you for that reward. And so the CalTIP committee um, began with the CalTIP program in 1981, and it's a nonprofit organization that raises funds to reward people. And it's not associated with, uh, so no funds from the department are used to reward um, individuals. They're all private funds or funds from uh, counties with regard to penalties in, from their courts. And as I said, uh, there's a $3,500 reward um, awarded to one person. Uh, there's Great Deer case for the second quarter of this year, uh, rewarded to one individual. Um, there are a couple um, people who called in Caltips with re regarding Joshua trees and, and knocking down Joshua trees. Uh, two people received uh, $500 rewards each, and uh, the list goes on. So it's pretty exciting. It's one of uh, my favorite things to do is when I am given a cow tip and make a case, I like to remember that uh, person who, who called it in and try to get them a reward through the cow tip rewards committee. And so now it's a, uh, it's a, it's a subcommittee of the Wildlife Office, Officers Foundation. And it's currently made up of 10 members and uh, they pro promote the CalTIP program and uh, raise money throughout the state. And then, as I said, they come, the donations come in as private donations or from uh, county fish and game fine commissions. And uh, they yeah. meet, usually they meet quarterly and sometimes they have uh, one or two meetings. And this is a reminder, um, we're close to the end of this PowerPoint. And there's the CalTIP number again. I highly encourage everyone who watches this PowerPoint to put that number in their phone and have it at their fingertips because no matter where you are in California, whether it's on the highway going up Interstate 5, um, uh, there may be a spill on the side of the road in the creek, um, calling CalTIP would be awesome. Um, the, uh, the bear cases, the deer cases, the Pismo clam cases, and you, know, you just have such a variety of resources in, in the county of San Luis Obispo that it's important for everyone to have this uh, CalTIP number at their fingertips wherever you live in. And with that, I wanna thank Monica Rutherford and uh, Mallory Clausen again. Uh, you made this, uh, I, I was excited to do this uh, PowerPoint for you. And thank you, Lieutenant Gill and Officers Hickey and Officer Chance. Uh, I really appreciate your time and participation in the video. And with that, Mallory, I turn it back to you. That was wonderful. <laughs> Lieutenant Gill went through 
and answered some questions that were in the Q&A. So, okay, looks like everything has been answered. It's yeah, great. Does anyone, I got the thing I told on some of those questions that were there. Um, I don't know if you can see them, Matt, either, but one of the questions was, uh, if you have the chance to take a photo or something, should you? Um, I would highly suggest taking photos and documenting it that way. I'll, you, you gain a photo's worth a thousand words, they say, and that's something that you can get. But don't contact people. Don't go out there and try to, you know, confront them or anything. That's our job. And let a wildlife officer try to do that or someone that's an official capacity. Um, there's no, we don't want anybody getting hurt or starting a fight or anything like that. Um, so yeah, pictures that you can do it from a safe location and not cause any uh, angst or anything like that. That'd be something that we definitely would say uh, is good. Um, all the Pismo clams that we seize, I would say 99.9% .9 are returned to the wild, even if they are broken or you know something like that. And the shell is gonna they're gonna die. Um, that way, at least the seagulls or something can eat them, and there'll be some type of return back to the wild in its natural state. Um, we very, very rarely seize any that are kept unless there's uh, a special reason or something like that. Um, and the fines, the fines all all kind of vary. Um, I've seen some go for $15,000. I've seen some go for $500. We recently had one, I think that was about 15 clams over the limit and they got charged for several sections and it was about $1,500 fine. So it all depends. I think on Terry Hickey's uh, bear case, that guy paid like $1,000 fine. He has three years, no hunting in San Luis Obispo County. Um, so that was another good one there. Um, and I think he may have lost, I don't think he lost his hunting license. I can't remember, but I know he can't hunt in San Luis Obispo County. So, um, that was a couple of things. And then the tar in Morro Bay, yes, that's naturally occurring um, there in Morro Bay. So you see that it happens north on Chevron Beach there quite a bit. So I got more, more questions now. Great. And just to add to that, the uh, you would you would attach a photo to the texting app just as you would if you're texting someone. And for to report it online, uh, you would just drag it or attach it to that page the same way you would attach it uh, to an email. Um, is spear fishing legal around the otters in Morro Bay? So you're not allowed to harass the wildlife. So you can't go up there and like start, you know, pushing them away or anything like that. You can spear fish in Morro Bay. Um, there's something saying how close you can or cannot be to an otter. You just can't uh, harass it in any way. So you can't be trying to make it move on or trying to uh, follow it or you know, shoot a spear gun at it. That would be illegal. I and mean, Rita, it says hundreds. I'm not sure what that is referring to. Oh, that they're, well, that they're eating. eating hundreds of clams at their campsite. So sometimes they are. I mean, sometimes they're very large families that are there. Um, you can have 20 people there and they get a lot of clams very quick so they could be eating them. Uh, typically the ones where we see like your 745 clams and things like that, that's typically going to lead wildlife officers to believe that some type of commercialization is taking place. So that could be something where they are selling them. Typically they're not selling them here locally. If any of this stuff is being sold, it seems to be sold out of the area, out of the county. Um, we don't typically see anybody here or have any reports of stuff being sold locally at restaurants. I mean, it'd be pretty hard for restaurants to try to sell Pismo clams like on a menu because it would throw a lot of red flags up. So they could be selling them um, on some type of black market uh, and in out of the area. I mean, wildlife uh, crimes are like second on the black market to illegal drug trafficking. So it's very, very possible that they are doing that when they get hundreds like that. If you see someone fishing in a local creek which has steelhead, should we call cow tip? There's nothing saying you can't, um, especially if the seasons are closed. I would highly recommend it. Right now we have a landlocked steelhead. Um, they're not going anywhere. The drought is really causing them problems. We have several and several creeks that have been um, poached recently and we've been trying to catch up to them. So yeah, if you see someone fishing, there's nothing saying you know, call in and give us a cow, a cow tip on it or report because what it does, it lets the officers know like, hey, yeah, this, uh, if there's someone fishing there, you know, we can't be everywhere at once, so maybe the next time they'll go up there, or maybe they're in the area and they can go by there and swing in, or maybe they know that there's not a violation. Yeah, and Eric, if uh, th when you call in a cow tip, they give you the option of uh, requesting a call back from the game warden who responds, the wildlife officer who responds, and then if you if you tell them yes, and that wildlife officer gets a uh, gets a hold of you, then it's an excellent time to start that relationship, and then you can X that officer directly. That might be it, you guys. Thank you so much for um, staying on with us and answering all those questions. And um, we all really enjoyed your presentation and appreciate your time here. Awesome, and, thanks Mallory. Yeah, um, and for all the friends that joined us here this afternoon, uh, you can find a list of upcoming presentations at, by visiting centralcoastparks.org.
And there you can also find all the recordings of all the other presentations we've had in the past for you to enjoy. And when you close out of the Zoom window, a short little survey will pop up. Um, so if you have any questions or comments about this program that you'd like to share with us, you can do that through the survey. So thank you so much, everyone. I hope you enjoy your weekend and um, see you on here again soon. <laughs>